the miracle of Middelburg, Louvain, Belgium, 1374. Time has obscured the name of the noble lady who is first mentioned in the history of this miracle. But it is known that she was a wealthy native of Middelburg, which is located in the southwest section of the Netherlands. She was kind to her domestics and so solicitous for the spiritual advancement that she taught them herself, inspiring them by her zealous observance of the church's traditional practices. On the first Sunday of the holy season of Lent of 1374, in accord with her usual custom, she encouraged her servants to prepare for the season of penance by going to confession and serving and receiving Holy Communion. Her words, however, were accepted by the servants only as a duty they had to perform. One of the servants, known simply as Jean of Cologne, felt obliged to participate with the others for fear of being disgraced. But he approached the Holy Sacrament without having first prepared himself by confessing his sins in the Sacrament of Penance. Kneeling with the others at the communion railing, he awaited the approach of the priest. But as soon as the host was placed upon Jean's tongue, he turned to flesh, which he was unable to swallow. Frightened, by the unexpected development, he attempted to hide his difficulty, but then made the mistake of biting into the flesh. At that moment, three drops of blood fell from his lips, staining the cloth that was draped over the communion railing. Startled at the sight of the bloody flesh in Jean's mouth and the blood dripping from it, the priest reacted promptly by removing the host and respectfully carrying it to the altar, where he placed it in a small golden vessel. It is reported that John was punished for his sacrilegious communion by being instantly blinded. Feeling overwhelming remorse for his sin, he knelt at the feet of the priest and confessed his sin before the entire congregation. His sincere sorrow resulted in the restoration of his sight. Thereafter, Jean is said to have led an exemplary life and to have maintained to his death a great reverence for the most holy sacrament of the altar. Details of the miracle spread throughout the country and were dutifully reported to Frederick III, Archbishop of Cologne, formerly the Count of Sarverden, since the Netherlands then belonged to the German Empire. Middelburg came under the Episcopal jurisdiction of Archbishop Frederick, who demanded that the miraculous host be transported to the metropolitan city of Cologne and enshrined in the cathedral there. The transfer of the host from Middelburg to Cologne inspired great interest during this 700-mile journey. After the host's safe deposit in the cathedral, an elaborate stone ostensorium was crafted for its exposition. Shaped like a cross, the end of each bar was embellished with golden circlets outlined with golden lace. Statues of the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph claimed positions beneath each arm, while further down the cross were miniature statues of St. Peter and St. Paul. In the central part of the cross was an oval glass through which the miraculous host could be seen. The placement behind this oval was unusual in that the miraculous host was positioned above a miniature golden chalice, which apparently had a cover since the host rested at the level of the chalice's rim. Prior Jean Bayonel, 
of the Augustinian order in Cologne obviously had great influence with the archbishop because he was able to obtain permission to remove the host from the cathedral to the church of his monastery. As soon as the Augustinians were in possession of the host, it was again venerated with special ceremonies. In the year 1380, Friar Bayron was transferred to the monastery of Louvain in Belgium. In an effort to extend devotion to the miracle, he asked permission of the archbishop to bring a part of the host to Louvain. At this time, the host, entire in all respects, still bore the impression of the teeth that marked its bloody origin. The archbishop consented to this proposal, but it seemed to all that the, to divide the miraculous host into two parts with an instrument would be disrespectful. For three days, the monks prayed and fasted for a solution to this problem. In answer to their prayers, the host was discovered to have divided into two parts without human intervention. One of the parts, together with a piece of blood, blood-stained cloth, was given to the prior for transport to Louvain. The other portion of the host remained in Cologne, in the parish church of St. Alban. In Louvain, a new rel reliquary was crafted by a jeweler of the city. The half of the miraculous host was enshrined in the same manner as it had been in Cologne. The host situated atop a miniature chalice, which was encased behind glass in a gold and silver cross-shaped reliquary kept within the church of the Augustinians, St. Jacques. It was a peaceful honor for four centuries. In honor of the miracle, the Confraternity of the Sacrament of the Miracle was organized in 1426 by the Provincial of the Augustinians. The members of the society were to participate in the good deeds of the religious of the province. The prior general of the order in Rome approved certain concessions in 1429, and Pope Eugene IV awarded indulgences. 1431. In 1665, the miraculous host was solemnly transported to a new altar. For this occasion, Pope Alexander VII accorded his blessings and indulgences. Medals were struck in the likeness of the host in his beautiful and costly reliquary, and several large paintings depicting events in the history of the miracle were executed, some of which still decorate the Church of St. Jacques. During the four centuries of its peaceful enthronement, the miraculous host was venerated by civil authorities, many ecclesiastics, and distinguished royalty. Its anniversaries and centennials were celebrated with the utmost pomp and fervor and enriched with the blessings and indulgences of Pope Paul V and Pope Clement XIV. For its fourth centennial observance, a new reliquary of gem-encrusted gold was crafted by a jeweler from Brussels. With the death of Empress Marie Therese in 1780 and the succession of Joseph II to the throne, the tranquility of the church was seriously disturbed with the suppression of Catholic feasts, religious observances, and religious houses, and by the harassments of priests and religious. When the closure of the Augustinian monastery was eminent, the miraculous host and the bloodstained cloth were entrusted to many pious persons who found it necessary to transfer them from one place to another. At one point, the relics were hidden in a tall oak chest, which still exists. Also preserved is a corporal, which was used to wrap the relics 
when they were transferred to a safe location on January 18, 1793 at the height of the French Revolution. During this time of danger, the miraculous host and blood-stained cloth were not neglected. Although priests were forbidden to wear clerical garb, they were occasionally able to offer Mass secretly in the presence of the holy relics. After peace was restored, the miraculous host and cloth were brought on September 27, 1803 to the chapel of the hospital which was under the care of the Augustinian nuns. This was necessary because the chapel of the Augustinian monastery had been seriously damaged by the revolutionaries. One month later, on October 28 of 1803, the miraculous relics were brought back to the Church of St. Jacques, where examinations were made to test their authenticity. It is in this church that the blood-stained cloth in this part of the miraculous host are still kept. During this time, the cloth was loaned to the Church of the Augustinians in Nimi, in the Netherlands. Upon its return, it was again deposited in the Church of St. Jacques in August 13, 1808. That year, a special reliquary was made to enshrine it. The cloth is secured behind a small circle of glass, which is framed in a circle of precious metal. This is enclosed in a reliquary consisting of a crystal tube closed at the bottom by a golden base and cap on top with a golden cross. The cloth can be clearly seen. The part of the miraculous host that is kept in Louvain is slightly browned and somewhat smaller than formerly, yet it is perfectly distinguishable as flesh. The host and the miniature chalice which supports it are kept in a reliquary fashioned in 1803 and are situated behind the crystal in the center of a golden cross. When this reliquary was exposed on the main altar or carried in procession, a freshly consecrated host was placed behind the small chalice with its fragment of the miraculous host. All the important papers regarding the history, travels, and examinations of the miraculous relics are kept in the archives of the Church of St. Jacques. Although the hosts in the bloodstained cloth are still well kept in this church, the church itself is now closed to public functions because the ground on which it stands is sinking, rendering the structure unsafe.